Hello. <laughs> Good morning. What? Hello. It's just what we were eating. <laughs> the sort of things we discuss before we come on there. We're up to a little bit of mischief, but not mischief we're going to share with you this morning. Thank you for joining us on the news review segment. Mama, how are you this morning? Oh, I am very well. Mm. Very well. I'm happy. Good to hear. Yeah. And I'm loving your, this time I'm being cautious. And then I'm like, can they, you start talking about flowing hair comments <laughs> I've never mentioned. But I love Small what, money you're you doing, give. What, what you're doing with your hair. Small you know, money you go I, give. I think you should turn so the camera captures it. You know. <laughs> anyway, I have the daily guide, the daily graphic, the daily dispatch, all the dailies, and the business finder this okay, morning. Okay, I'll stick to the Times, uh, the Business and Financial Times, and the Daily Statesman newspaper. So we start with the Ghanaian Times today. Front page of the paper, strengthen psychological counseling for security services. That's a call by a clinical psychologist. And this coming on the back of all the very tragic uh, incidents surrounding the death of some police uh, persons in recent days. On COVID-19, that toll shoots up to 561. Active cases now 700. 1,866. Also, Ghana loses $19.8 million through fraudulent activities. The banner headline is a health alert. It says Ebola virus scare. Ghana Health Service places health facilities on high alerts. These are the stories, the headlines on the front page of the paper. If you go to the center spread, apart from the main stories uh, with their headlines on the front page, there's also this one. The Ghana Medical Association has attributed the spike in COVID-19 deaths in the country to limited access to health care facilities. The association also lamented the inadequate number of medical personnel handling critical to severe COVID-19 cases and said it was contributing to the rising deaths. Okay, and then uh, a clinical psychologist, Dr. Ani Gezi, has called for the strengthening of psychological counseling given to security officers. According to her, the spate of, the su of suicide in the Ghana police service would be eradicated if officers were given the necessary counseling and attention. It would be good if they can also speed up investigations so that we can be sure the course of these deaths since we can't categorically say in the absence of proper investigations we can't conclude that these were suicide on the back page residents epa clash over siting of fuel station and then the municipal chief executive of la dade kotopon municipal assembly uh, presented some dua desk uh, to three public schools in his municipality to replace the broken ones all right these are the headlines at least uh, let's see i think that i can do the crime page on page three fire ravages orphanage at yama uh, several livestock and properties have been destroyed in the fire outbreak that ravaged an orphanage in wale wale in the west mamprugu districts of the northeast region police also uh, were told are investigating the cause of death of a taxi driver, Alex Mante, who was found behind a steering wheel at Asofa near Virgin Water Company in Accra. Uh, this is the public relations officer of the Greater Accra Police Command speaking to the Times. And she said on Monday at about 4 p.m., police received a report that a 49-year-old driver was found dead behind the steering wheel of his taxi cab parked in front of a chopper. Uh, so DSP... Efia Tenge said Mante was reported to have bought food from the chop bar and returned to his car, but unable to move his car. She said inspection in the vehicle revealed a bowl of banku and soup. Hey. Uh, yeah, a drug. Okay, so there was a drug. They, it, they give the name of the drug as well. Uh, capsules in pack. And then uh, there were no marks of assault on the deceased, adding that the body has been deposited at the Nsawan Government Hospital while investigations continue. So this is uh, the picture painted. Somebody who had just bought food uh, got back into his taxi and then they just found him dead. That wow. Is, that is That's bizarre, isn't it? Like bizarre. Mm. Rather bizarre. Yeah. Charlie life, eh? Hmm. You could have it like in the next second and just lose and it's it. Gone. But I hope that proper investigations 
uh, would, would be carried out so that we can, again, know the proper cause of death in this instance. That's it really for the graphic. And I'll just add the bit you brought in about the psychological impact of you know, COVID-19 and how some people are facing psychological issues. Recently, it's the police that has been in the news. And more and more, even outside of the police, I don't know why I keep getting these stories, but even last night, an elderly person sharing with me same issues of, look, I have it, and now even first it was... Um, What's that thing when you, you, you know you have something? Denial. Mm. Denial. And the phases people are going through. People are getting panic attacks. People are... And sometimes these could actually lead to people succumbing. It's not, it may not be the virus, but the thinking of it that, hey, I've got it and all of that. So, and unfortunately, here we are finding ourselves in a part of the world where access to some of these, you know, people who can counsel you out of the situation is, is yeah. not so easy to come by. I mean, you look at the statistics of our psychologists and psychiatrists and, and even the whole mindset about, oh, if you go see these people and yet something is, yeah. some screws are loose in your head, you know, all of that creates a, a huge mess around a time like there's, this. There's a whole chain eh, of events. First, when you go and take your sample, mm. there is a feeling. The agony. When Am you're I positive? waiting Am I for the results, when you get the phone call, you're thinking what is coming. When you so don't get a, the phone call, when you, uh -huh. <laughs> that's even So it's worse. just serious. And then once you're, once you're told that you're positive, your test came out positive, mm. then you're thinking, I guess those who get into that denial stage, they're probably thinking, but I've been doing everything right. Yeah. How can I be positive? You know? And then I guess you're probably thinking the next thing. So what do I do? People Does it mean me, I can't go to work? Does it mean I can't do this? Exactly. Does it mean I can't do that? People have yeah. said, look, I, I, I use two or three masks. I sanitize. I wash my hands. I am the police when it comes to my... We heard, uh, you know, that elderly man, I think a professor, share with yeah, you professor right Hesse. here on this show. Mm -hmm. Yet, so when you get it, you're asking yourself, I've done everything yeah. correctly. Yeah. Why am I still getting this? So you remember when we spoke to the head of psychiatry at the Konfuanochi Teaching Hospital? Dr. Ruth did mm. say to us that don't ask why. It's very difficult, but don't ask why. You know, just accept that you got it. Because if you begin to ask the why, you get into some kind of complication yeah. in your head. Yeah. yeah. And it's a pretty don't ask tricky why. place to be. So don't ask why. if you're told you have it, you could seek a second opinion. That's in your own, I mean, if you have Cut. the money to do that. But just accept the reality. Yeah. And, and I, I feel it's important because the sooner... You start tackling it, the better. I, I, it, it, well, but there are people now getting it, it and they are thinking, they are feigning, it's malaria. It's mm, this. If you're not mm, careful, mm. by the time you start targeting COVID-19, it could be too late. And, yeah. and, and the symptoms are different for different people. Yeah. It, it may work on you in a very bad way. It, it, your symptoms may not be even any of the things that we put out there every day. Yeah. You know, when coronavirus first came, we, we had specific symptoms. Now are we now know. breaking out with rushes and, yeah. the rest, and all of that is tied to COVID. Exactly. Now we know you can test negative, you can test positive after your 14 days or whatever days you can test negative and be fine. But you could suffer some complications later. Yeah. That was also not something that was discovered in the first stage. I, I, I have sure. a drastic response and I don't know how easy this is, but is it possible to say... I have coronavirus, and so what? I'm going to deal with it. I know it's not easy. I'm but, saying it. But shouldn't it, we have got to that point by that, now? No. It's difficult. It's difficult for... Because I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the point person. where sometime last year, in the early stages, w w you know, people, even public officers, found it very difficult. That's why I found it so apt when um, Dr. Selby, Johnny Selby, of um, the National Health Insurance mm, you know, mm, Authority. Mm. You know, she came out. Yeah, she yeah. was one of the first people, if not the first, to actually say that I have the coronavirus, I am you know, isolating, I am working at it. I think we need many more because it's, it's just this huge uh, thing in the minds of people. And so people even who suspect they have it, ordinary people are thinking, hey, the stigma and mm. all of that. And people, are, people around me, and you know, a lot of us are not in you know, detached houses and the rest, compound yeah. houses, settings, and all of that. And people are thinking, hey, how will I even get access to the yeah. basic things? And the can take care of severe critical conditions. That's where we are, people. Uh, we can't, 
we can't get tired talking about this crucial, uh, hmm. you know, message. But listen, there's also another thing. You've the grace, the grace. You know. I think it's God through all of this. Yeah, so. undeserved Let's favor. <laughs> so, as you do this, and try and do the the local remedies as well. You know, uh, everything combined, Masa. Exercise if you can. No, not if you can. Well, if if you know, if you you know some people advice, to some people. I mean, there may be people with do it. brittle bone disease or some kinds of things which yeah. may not allow them okay. to. But if you it's can, true. and children, yeah. children for example, <laughs> not Shale. really. <laughs> We'll get out of Well, this. the Daily Graphic, very quickly. We've been talking COVID, COVID. It's our reality now. Yeah. Extend compulsory retirement age. Minister-designate makes case for sustained pension scheme. We're talking about that in the news. Then Ghana donates election materials to Niger. That's on page 20. Military will be phased out from police operations. That's according to Ambrose Derry. Story on page 16. Let me just take a brief look at that. And there have been many complaints, especially on uh, the back of last year's elections. Now, the minister uh, designate for the interior, Mr. Ambrose Derry, has indicated the Ghana Police Service will soon phase out the military presence in its operations. He says government is working to resolve some capacity challenges facing the police and that once that is done, the presence of the army in police operations would be completely phased out. And he said this when he appeared before the appointments committee of uh, Parliament. Supreme Court, he has three issues today. That's also there. So the three main items, an application for a stay of proceedings, uh, a review application, and the closing submissions of the lawyers for the two parties. We'll be bringing you much more on that in the course of uh, the day. But when you turn to page five, when we talk COVID-19, uh, don't take it for a joke. Zanzibar's 77-year-old first Vice President Saif Sharif Hamad, who has been undergoing treatment for COVID-19 in hospital, has died. Mm -hmm. May his soul rest in peace. That's on page five. When you turn to page nine, I just want to do this other international story very quickly and wrap up. Trump attacks Republican leader Mitch McConnell. Uh, Mama, if you <laughs> followed the, the story, I mean, you know, McConnell has vacillated a bit between whether, I mean, at the outset, he seemed as though he were going to himself vote to convict Trump and to rally others to do so. Then he backtracked at a point in time, but I guess not good enough because former President Trump just laid into him and he said, Mitch is a dour, sullen and unsmiling political hack. He just ripped into him and he says, if the party's senators retain him, they will not win again. I don't know, but and, and it appears the man, Donald John Trump, has this hold on the party still, his base. Oh, that and don't is. you forget that his that base will also vote for these senators and the rest. So some of them are very cautious. It's like what, walking that you know, fine line. You know when the strategist line. starts speaking, they talk about the, what he garnered in the election. And they talk about, so that's his following. <laughs> you, get, you get it. But I don't know why they can't blank him. I, because you know the previous president's are usually not in the spotlight. Once in a long while you hear Clinton or Bush, you know, or It's Obama. an unwritten rule. They don't so, interfere. Exactly. I, but, but this one is so quickly back in the news. <laughs> I just wondering, but of course it's Trump. <laughs> anyway, Donald Trump, you know, recently, just to add up, um, President Biden actually said that he had consulted some for, former living presidents. <laughs> and do you know what he added? <laughs> with one exception. You can, guess, you can guess who that exception was. On the back page, Ghana on high Ebola alert. That's it with the Daily Graphic. Okay, let me do the Daily Statesman. On the front page, GS released senior high school placement on Sunday. Secondary Takradi resident shun assembly workers over COVID-19. Cite Dr. Ayeni for contempt of courts. That's Nana B. Edge in the Supreme Court. He's one of the legal spokesperson for the... Second respondent in the election petition. Three million jobs created on the Kufuado's first term, says Bafoe Iwa, uh, when he appeared before the Vertin Committee. A bit about this story about Sekendi Takwadi residents. Uh, it says workers at the Sekendi Takwadi Metropolitan Assembly are being shunned by the residents for fear of infecting them with COVID-19. This follows uh, health services description of the assembly as an epicenter of the virus in Western region, mm. uh, as used in this context, refers to, okay, the Sekendi Takwadi metropolitan area. 
get that. However, some of the resident, particularly traders, do not seem to understand the issue and are, as a result, avoiding the assembly workers. Reports indicate that these traders have, for their safety, resolved not to do business with the revenue collectors. A, and according to the chief executive, uh, Metropolitan Chief Executive, this has adversely affected the Assembly's revenue mobilization. He says his administration is now cash-strapped and can simply not undertake projects with dwindling internally generated fan. One of such projects, he says, is work on the Isel Lagoon, which is dear to the hearts of residents of Secondi. Ah, really? See? Somebody said, oh, we, we had moved on uh, from the stigmatization. We haven't. This is stigmatization right here. Mm -hmm. Uh, so if they say, oh, Accra is epicenter, does it mean that you won't come to Accra if you are in some other uh, region or some other parts of, well, anyway. Let's see Australia home. This one too shall pass. It shall. <laughs> the Daily Dispatch now. Battle for MPP's General Secretary post Mustafa Hamid and Opariansa to face John Buedu. So it appears there's a lot going on within the MPP because there's also this one here. MPP will not allow Alan and Baumia flag bearer jostling affect government. Is that so? And, and well, John Boydou oh, okay. is saying that. But this is a reality here. The, the Alan Bahumia thing is not something that I feel the, <laughs> the ruling government can run away from. How it will pan out? Well, <laughs> it's up to the party and those who are going to vote, the delegates, come that day. I always say, though, Charlie, hmm. there's no high and dry when it comes to these things. Uh, Sir John, may his soul rest in peace, famously said, <laughs> here delegates. And if you recall what happened in the early 2000s when Vice President Ali Muhammad, then may so rest in peace, was contesting, you would know that there's nothing that is high and dry. Ghana's day of shame, murder of the judges. Ghana Health Service issues Ebola alert. That's it for uh, the Daily Dispatch. Maybe from the center spread, I'll just add this one. KB Kwonson, June 4, the explosion. A great man. I remember meeting him at the CDD some time back, generous enough to give me some copies of his books. Security uh, guru, if you would call him that. We thank God for his life. KB Kwanson, if you're listening this morning, God bless you. Then there's a 35-year-old. those books. I should. Yeah, I should have I should for have. the books. He gave them. To, I didn't even know he'd be bringing me books. <laughs> <laughs> that five year old fractures legs in ghastly moto accident. That's it for the Daily Dispatch. All right, let me do my last paper, the Business and Financial Times newspaper. There's some good news. Domestic tax, uh, tax revenue hits 31 billion Ghana cities in the first 10 months of pandemic year. And they say compared to the previous year, same period, we did better with the revenue collection. So that's what the story is about. You can read on, it's on the full details of that is on page three. So this is January to October, 2019. And compared to previous year when there was no pandemic, economy data shows revenue generated from domestic taxes performed better. Uh, also on the front page, US businesses renew investment interest despite COVID-19. Court orders GC net to pay workers as determined by the National Labor Commission. So an Accra High Court has thrown out a case brought before it by Ghana Community Network Services Limited seeking the nullification of an arbitration settlement for some 150 workers who were rendered redundant last year. GC net has been in a tangle with the workers and the National Labor Commission, after an arbitration hearing, ruled that the redundant staff are entitled to and must be paid what the company's human resource policy on redundancy clearly states. Uh, the company has also served notice of redundancy letters to the remaining staff working on the GGov project to be laid off by end of April 2021, following the non-renewal of GCNet service agreement with the Ghana Revenue Authority. More on that in the paper today they've got other business uh, financial stories if you're interested kindly grab the business and financial times well the final one i'll do from business paper to another business one uh, the business finder aid crunch look within and that is actually professor joshua abo uh, finance and financial economist at the university of ghana business school he is encouraging countries like ghana to switch from dependence on foreign aid to mobilize local resources to meet their developmental needs and he maintains that foreign aid is dwindling so 
uh, apart from private capital flows and remittances, we have no choice but to look within and mobilize funds to support growth. I'm sure we, we started saying this before, maybe even the good old professor was born. And <laughs> we're still, you know, singing that song, mm. living that mantra, but we, we, we haven't been able to do that, have we? I mean, if you look at it Almost critically, since in Chroma, recycled. when we tried to be self-sustaining, have our own industries and the rest, I always say, you don't have your own industries. How can you, you always be dependent on other, you know, uh, entities that have their own, because then they will produce for you and you end up being the consumer all the time. The yeah. resources we have to, we are not managing well, the mm. gold and the rest. And finally, this one, that's how I'll wrap up. Government creates three million jobs in four years. Bafo, I, I just want to find out from you. He says he's ready to give us the, the facts and the figures backing that claim. And interestingly, that question that was posed to him, your own vice president said, you know, late last year that you had created two million. So is that to say between then and now you've created an additional one million jobs? Mm. And he says he has the facts and the figures. Yeah, he three million said jobs. that he had, he had shared those figures on the floor of parliament and the seven parliament. Mm. So I guess we all have to go back and try and do some reconciliation. Yeah. Three million, that would be... 10% of the population, right? That should be good, about, that about should be good news, million. shouldn't it? Wow. That's, that should be good news. No, it is good news. <laughs> but is it the reality? <laughs> well, the minister says so. <sighs> okay. <laughs> oh. Do you have contrary figures? Uh, he's going to present his figures. Uh -huh. I'm going to do the... We're going to do reconciliation. I'm, I'm going to do the no election idea. petition bit. So <laughs> I have my... But you bring your figures. And let me see. Uh -huh. All right. Let's spend some time on myjournline.com before we wrap up Make Away for Sports. Oh. So we'll try to load it up, myjoyonline.com, and see what uh, the major stories are. Okay, yeah. It's a very tragic one indeed. Uh, yesterday, we got the news of the Ghana Railway... Development Authority CEO Richard Dumbo, uh, his death. And uh, if you read details of the story on myjawline.com, it will tell you how he had contracted COVID-19, but was in isolation at home until his death. Really, really sad news. I think his, he last spoke to us uh, on a front uh, with Raymond Aqua. Uh, may his soul rest in peace. Amen. And uh, may the family... You know, our prayers are with the family, really. May they be strong, you know, in these periods. Very sad. All right, other stories. Our rebrand, which uh, comes to feel like home. Uh, Ajua Safu. And Ajua Safu spent, I guess, the shortest time. Um, Considerations. She's, well, she's the, a nursing mother. Yeah, but the, uh, the leader, the majority leader, the parliamentary affairs minister, designated, also spent... A, a very short amount of time. I haven't done the comparison. I don't know who spent the shortest. Mm -hmm. uh, but maybe Ajoa Safu, maybe. Ajoa Safu was short. H how, how long was that? Because I was monitoring. I, I, I didn't pay attention, but I, I mean. I think Oseche for, for all those was listened about one to, hour or less. Oseche, I didn't listen to the full thing. It so was about, I cannot say I think it was certain. about less than an hour, mm -hmm. I think. Mm -hmm. uh, but also because, see, there's something with the verting. Those who are more like being retained in their various Portfolio, ministries, right. it's, it's understandable that they get to answer a lot of questions. There's because a lot it's to account like for. Accountability. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but that should get us thinking. Mm. In, in administrations to come, in future administrations, should we be looking forward to ministers being retained because that helps us a lot instead of oh i am now going to the ministry so what you have said you are now bringing it to my attention when i get there i will check you get it no no it's a very good point <laughs> you make because then in that instance we can get some accountability from them some yeah. things can be exposed that under normal circumstances you wouldn't see yeah but we must commend the the Verton, uh committee for the job that they're the doing. Oh, surprise. They're doing, they're doing very well. Mubarak, yesterday he didn't yeah. ask Ajua for any questions, just <laughs> wish her well. Uh, but there was some calculation bits. I don't know where how now was going, or where he came from or going with Ajua Safu. He may Safu have needed us here to get hey. to <laughs> Constitutional calculation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, that's it uh, for the news review segment. But, you know, with what just happened to the Railways Authority CEO, 
As you keep hearing these stories, we must learn something from them. Even if you've, you've felt that all the talk about COVID-19 is not true, as you see it happening to people and people falling off meeting their maker, please take the necessary precautions. Protect yourself, protect your family, protect those around you. That's how we wrap it up. It's time now for sports. Do stay.